I don't know how many other people are waiting for anybody else, Sheila. Uh, Katie, Katie, Katie says she's going to be late because okay. she's stuck in Asian Town, but 15 minutes late. Okay. And Pat, I, I left her a couple messages, but I'm connected with her. Okay. Uh, voicemail of her. Yeah. But anyway, this is started. It's not loud anymore, but you're on. Okay. This is the regular meeting of the Fairhaven. Historic Preservation Commission, adequate notice of this hearing has been given pursuant to the provisions of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act. At the time of the board reorganization in January of this year, the board adopted its regular meeting schedule for the year. Notice of the schedule was sent to and published in the Asbury Park Press on January 26, 2024, and notice of the Two River Times on February 7, 2024, as well as supplemented by published notice on July 11, 2024, to allow of the hybrid format. That notice was also posted on the bulletin board in the borough, in the borough, in Borough Hall, and has remained uh, continuously posted as required by the statute. A copy of the notice and is and has been available at the to the public and is on file at the office of the borough clerk. A copy of the notice has been sent to such members of the public as have requested such information in accordance with the statute. Adequate notice having been given. The secretary, board secretary, is directed to include this statement in the minutes of this meeting. Uh, can we have a roll call? Mr. Pavlov? Here. Mrs. Drummond? Uh, Mr. Anderson? Mrs. Muller? Here. Mr. Fluter? Here. Mrs. Pastora? Here. <laughs> wow, perfect time. Here. And Mr. Smith? Here. Uh, Okay, so we, we don't have any old, uh, any old business necessarily other than our liaison reports and what we were discussing um, sort of informally, which is this capstan uh, element that's been, uh, uh, that has been at the Department of Public Works. So we'll talk about that at the end under our um, committee liaison reports, but we do have one informal application, uh, basically an informal is coming to the commission for the purpose of indicating your, your house, your structure, and sort of getting the temperature, if you will, as to what you're allowed to do and what the commission allows uh, would allow you to do um, based on what we've done in the past and based on our criteria. So that application is Wendy and Mike Bernstein at 699 River Road, Lot 27, Lot 51. Um, and the work proposed is just general addition and renovation of that structure. We can have you come up front and uh, we'll hear from you. Or is that the historic district? That part I'm, of I'm wondering about that. I, don't I thought it was it pretty far down. Yeah, Road. that's by me on William. Um, yeah, across, right off, across but, from church, where like where Church Street is, from okay. Church Street. So when I looked on the, the, the map, we're not within the historical district. So we mm -hmm. would not have jurisdiction to hear from you. However, that being said, um, we would welcome and um, gladly work with you in terms of uh, any types of construction projects that you want to do, any input. Uh, we have a master builder. We have an architect who is not here tonight, but uh, has particular insight in historic preservation and, you know, uh, additions and historically sympathetic additions to existing houses and things of that nature. But we'd love to hear from you about the house. You supplied some photos, some history of the house when, when you bought it and some other things just for our own information. So, so what, we're, what we're asking for, we're looking for an architect and a builder, uh, a couple of names that we can go through. So that's what we're asking for. Uh, we're not really sure what we're looking at. We know at one point our porch was opened now it's enclosed. We'd like to reopen the porch and make it a rocking chair porch mm -hmm. and build out the back. Mm -hmm. uh, and in addition, because the vent used to have like the marsh, because we have the, we own part of the marsh or creek, um, is from our bathroom, which is <laughs> really, really sad. Um, so we'd like to like put a bedroom on the back so it would open up and put a family room underneath it so that we can actually enjoy looking out at the marsh rather than using the bathroom to look at the marsh. Yeah, and, and maybe get rid of that tree yeah. that's standing. Well, 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 our view is that the house that we were in, the 629, was um, Viola Sickles. Viola Sickles. She lived with her sisters. Okay. <laughs> so that was an interesting cool. bit of history there. That's interesting because the house on the Normandy 
Uh, my husband and I had owned it's it sits sideways, probably maybe the fifth house down on the right, it's yellow. And I understood that was Viola Sickle. Uh, when she was a right. sickle. <laughs> this is when she lived because she was a single woman living with her sister. So she was married to Arthur Sickles. Mm -hmm. So I think that house, it was a Sickles house. Mm -hmm. And then because she was related to the, the captain. Right. Uh, Throckmorton. What's his name? The, the Al Pacino captain. Throckmorton. Right. And then, Our neighbors owned that house. Yeah, and Chris, yeah, yeah, Chris and Ruth owned that house next door and they were the ones that supplied us with the history of what was going on in the house. So she grew up in that house. I, yeah. say. I don't know technically if she owned it, but it was a family from what we understand. Right. And yeah, yeah. How old is the house? Do you know how old the house is? 1905. Okay. Uh -huh. So the first thing, and Joe, correct me if I'm wrong because you did better than I do. This is probably the original portion of the house. This element right here, we can say that's the original. Yeah, I would this, think that's what the original. This may have been an addition on the side, but an old addition. Clearly, the front porch, which may have just been, it may have just been this little sort of uh, gable structure, but it may have been a gable, an L structure, meaning that it had a side jut out, but probably similar to the roof line here with an open porch. But you can see that they did, you know, they put these additions. This is kind of an interesting little, almost like a, uh, a cotty type addition that they're kind of putting on the front. And then clearly that front porch was enclosed, you know. I'm thinking that that dormer might have been an addition, the front dormer. Yeah, you mean, uh, that's what I'm thinking too, yeah. right? So is that, that actually is, is a storage room. That's not living space. Oh, so that when they put in the, uh, the front <laughs> porch and they enclosed it and made it a living area, we think that they put that up top and expanded it because uh, they really didn't have access to an attic. So they think it might have been a flat roof and they went <laughs> there. Yeah. yeah, and they put that in there just for storage area. Mm -hmm. And the chimney is kind of interesting too, Joe. What do you think about that? Because it looks, you know, it, obviously it probably services the furnace in the house. No, it doesn't. No, it's actually, um, the furnace comes out the side. Okay. Um, that is our wood burning stove. Okay. Um, because that looks like it's probably more modern, just by yeah, at least the yeah. brick chimney well, is more. It modern. was when we moved in, there was a different one and it was falling apart. Oh, so, so you so rebuilt it. Okay. Okay. All right. That explains the brick. Yeah. And then obviously it's probably like you know, the, the storm windows in the front are probably like the <laughs> 60s, 70s, probably. Or no, no we put those in when oh, you moved in. The only what year did you move in? Uh 2008, 2009. Oh, okay. uh, December 2008. Okay. But the only original windows are the two on the end of the so-called attic and that uh, dormer window. The rest of them are we put in. So you're that, talking uh, about this one here. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's the bathroom window we looked out. <laughs> and that is right next to it to that the right. Basement window? No, that when that window there, that's an addition. Yeah. So Which that, one is that's the, the casement window. Oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. That's part of that. Addition. That's on the back. The um, that was put on there with a mud room coming up from the bottom. So we have a mud room with a bathroom off the side, which is really outside. Okay. And we want to enclose that, make it a full bathroom. And then up above is a it's another little storage area up here. This gable up here, the one on the right. The one on the left is the original bathroom window. Okay. Yeah. You want to remove that window and you want to put something so you can look at. Look well, at we it. want we want to take that area. If there's a porch underneath it. We want to take the porch yeah. and make it into a family room. Right. Because right. ah. you could preserve that window. Yeah. Oh, we want to, to do so. Cool that's yeah. that's a very yeah. cool window. Yeah. If you, on the <laughs> right hand side, if you go to the, I don't know if you have a picture to the left of it. Um, there's another window at, at the st on the staircase. Which is just an it's fabulous window, and we have no idea what they put it in. It's just a window that's there when we go up the stairs. Yeah, yeah. Is that those windows were kind of like almost like the builder's signature when they would you know, put them in the house? You know, there's right. a lot of them around. Like uh, I lived in a house on Fifth Fifty One Clay Street that has almost an identical window, a little bit narrower than that. Is there is there uh, stained glass in there, or is it? Yeah. Yeah. So that was almost like the builder's you know, like, the decorative signature. Oh, a lot of them have the diamond on the bottom too. Yeah. But that mm -hmm. one just seems to be straight across the bottom, just the diamonds on the top. Interesting. It's a fascinating house. It is. I mean, if you, they would never allow it to be built in it. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is uh, the upstairs hallway. Um, you go up the stairs, you go to the right, and then it veers off to the left. So it's not straight. There's like it, it goes off in a, in a direction that we don't know why. Um, but through that area, through the middle of the house, is actually the wood burning stove chimney hmm. and the sleeves. So it act, when we put it on, it warms up the house. It's kind of interesting because that's an interesting addition. You know, you don't really see yeah. that type of an addition to put on. Like it was very, it was probably very simple. How you drive down River Road and see a lot of these just little. Right, you know, simple peak gable mm -hmm. houses, and um, and you know, I guess people try to do different types of things, but someone was a bit creative when they built when they put the oh, addition in this one. That room on the left, mm -hmm. um, that's the only room with more than one window in it. Mm -hmm. Um, besides the front room that we um, the porch, that's the only one with a side window and a front window. Mm -hmm. All the other rooms have one window. How long had the family that you bought it from? In 2008. Eight. How long did they live there before you don't know? I don't know. We don't know. The uh, Wojciechowskis. Oh, yeah. they'll change. Ch <laughs> yeah. yeah. They weren't there. Back. You said you put new windows in. Did you do anything to, uh, anything different? <laughs> replaced windows that were there. Did you do anything different we, to the facade uh, of the house? We replaced the windows. And that was it because they needed insulation. Right. No, we did. The, the oh, trim, okay. the trim going down is different okay. um, than the original trim. And that was that was just in the front. That's right, because he had a job fitting. Right. Yeah, yeah, he had to read the yeah, windows because he was kind of like cockeyed. So would you put some original with you know, original style windows back in, like the six over ones or if we if we that? knew where to get them? <laughs> I mean that's what that's what we're at need. We need help on stuff like that. We right. don't we don't know exactly the the original style of the house. We we don't have any pictures. Mm -hmm. I, um, did, I did go to the library to try to ask, and they're the ones that actually we uh, recommended we come to you guys. Right. Because I couldn't find any old pictures of that our particular house. I saw some of the street and some other houses, but I didn't see our house and what it looked like originally. There's something to compare it to. Have you gone to I any looked, architects at all? Uh, I didn't find anything about that. Um, um, I don't not, even know what kind of house it is. Not it's it's it considered a shingle style. Yeah. Or what what kind of house it's considered because it's a mishmash. It seems to me anyway. I'm not yeah. quite sure what it is. We we think <laughs> we actually think that there's one picture of the house from the 1950s in the Fairhaven book mm -hmm. uh, because there was a car that ran into one of our trees. Oh. And they had a picture of the front of the house with the car on the, on the lawn. Okay. Um, Chris told us that was that was our house. It was a car. A car oh. hit the tree, and people were around, it and they took a picture and stuck it in the book. Yeah, that would have probably been early 1900s then, if there was a car. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, understanding if there was a photo of a car. No, 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 no. It, it was like an accident. So a car ran off the road into the tree. Okay. It was a, and they and it was an enclosed porch at the time. It wasn't an open porch, so we think it was from the nineteen fifties. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, sure. and I don't think that uh, I think the shingle that's on the shingle, of course, that's that they put a bigger shingle style, and then it probably was on the original and everything. Okay, it's hard to say. Um, but I grew up in a house with a similar window going up the stairs in Red Bank, and similar vintage house, yeah. and it had. Just big one over one windows in the rest of the house. And that house was built in 1912, which is pretty close to when right. this was built. What do you think? Who would you recommend? I mean, you could give a couple of names or something as to somebody think that we could consult yeah. with, because that would obviously, I mean, we can't really recommend uh, an architect. No, no, we just, we're just looking, we're not looking for recommendations. What we're looking for is suggestions. And I just have to say, um, you represent what we want. For Fairhaven, in my opinion, which is that folks don't have to come here and ask that question. They can do all, anything outside of the historic district. They can tear down, they can change, they can do whatever they want. So the fact that you're taking the time to research and you want to have the right architect, you want to preserve it in the best as you can, I think it's just, it's it makes me very, it pleases me. I, I, I wish we had sort of like a... Yeah. I almost think we should have a repository, like you said, you can't make recommendations, but just like I have a ready-made list of, hey, 
people that are, you know, that do uh, historic work. But ordinarily, idea. the way it works is right. we don't really tell you what, not, not right. necessarily, we don't tell you or we don't advocate what to do or what not to do. If you go and, and want to do work on the house and, and provide plans and specifications, you come before and there's a give and take Correct. with us in terms of what we think would be historically uh, appropriate or inappropriate, that sort of thing. We don't have jurisdiction, so you could do whatever you want, but to the extent that you want to work with us, we're happy to work with you as well, and we can make recommendations, but that will only be probably after you get your elevations or have your architect get involved and do sketches, or even if you work with a builder, you know, certain builders are a little bit more in tune with the historic aspect of things than others. Some just want to, you know, remove things and put, you know, do it in a way that's not really, you know, sympathetic to the original structure. Right. That's like what next want, the sensitivity, yeah. or, you know, right to, it's a beautiful yeah. long house. I'm, I'm Really, I appreciate that. I think we all do. That's right. Yeah. And you've all, you've also, I mean, we're the historic commission, and they've heard me give this speech so many times. One of our charters is to help support or advocate or teach or educate places that have, are of historical significance. Just you saying that Viola Sickles may have grown up there with her sisters, bingo. Now that's a beautiful link to the Fairhaven district because then she's lived her married life there. And, you know, there's just all kinds of cool history that the fact that you're interested in it is something that I think we need to celebrate in some fashion. Yeah. Like when you're done with this, I would love to see like a Fairhaven, New Jersey post that says, hey, look at what these folks did, because we need to show people that that's a good thing to do. Yeah. It also does get pretty pricey, though, too. I mean, that's yeah. something where, you know, you can... You know, there's an old movie called The Money Pit. Yeah, uh, right. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you basically <laughs> yeah, we already have one. <laughs> yeah. I definitely think it was resided. Yeah. The angles look too new. But then bigger, yeah. like right. So uh I, again, I, you know, maybe Jay Jay would probably have some ideas as far as architects that uh you know uh that would be you know, wanting to work with you. I think that, you know, since he's a member of the commission, he probably, although I think he would be great and he, and he would be able to give you great ideas and he probably still could, but then, yeah, no, I get maybe he could because, well, maybe he's somebody that you guys should talk to. And I'm saying it because of my knowledge of him and his ability to do things with a house like this and give you ideas and open up your eyes to certain things. And since you wouldn't be coming before us on an application, I don't know that there would necessarily be a conflict of interest. Right. Yeah, exactly. and Joe you know, has like worked on old houses. He's a master yeah. builder, so yeah, there's no tip for tap. You know, there's... yeah, but I'm not doing big, big work anymore. No, <laughs> I think so. this would be a big job. Yeah, I, I but there, do. there are some good builders around. Yeah, yeah so it's Anderson Campanella is the architect. Okay, thank you. And uh, if I can. Who's the one that you liked, but for the um, renovation of this chapel, but the borough ended up going to the lower bidder, but you liked the other architect? We talked about that last time. Patlin? Alexander Patlin. I don't think he would take out a project like this, though. Uh, I'll give you that name, though, too. Um, he might have. Yeah. Uh, ideas so the phone number is 732 219. Zero zero one four. That's a good idea. We do appreciate this. Thank you. Thanks yeah, I'm not our, our pleasure. So we, we've worked with um, a historic architect in Spring Lake, and he is for the most part <coughs> tired, but. Um, he has other people that work him. I mean, he would, you know, probably want to look at this and have people that would, you know, be very uh, enthusiastic to work with you. It's called the Architects Studio, and his name is Alexander. Last name is Pavliv, P A V L I V, and their phone number is 732 776 8777. Do you want an email address? Yes, please. It is uh, M, is it Mary? B, Patrick, 77, A I A, at AOL.com. A disclaimer we don't, you know, 
We don't give out this advice or tell you have to use them, of course. But no. uh, but this uh, Alexander Pavlov is a, a well-renowned historic, historic architect. Has worked on structures in Europe and Manhattan, and is uh, you know very well-renowned in, uh, in that space. And he does have a, a beautiful website with lots of examples of some of the work that he's done. And I'm sure um, Anderson Campanella can help link as well. So you could. Thank you very much. We do appreciate this. It's lovely. And we do appreciate you seeing us. Sure. And when you get your plans together, you know, feel free to come back on an informal basis and we'd be happy to give, you know, some give and take because frequently, frequently what we find are people come with certain ideas and it's a chore and it, they probably look at the commission as being um, something they don't necessarily want to do or don't voluntarily want to get involved in. Um, and we're, you know, sensitive to the fact that they may bring in experts, they may have to spend money for that, but the give and take and the ultimate, the final product, I think most of the people have been happy because they get a structure that they like even better than they did originally. And, you know, it has our collective input. And I just think that the system works pretty well that way. So hopefully we can, you know, lend some guidance to you and, uh, and have you have a prettier house that's uh, historically accurate. Thank you. Welcome, Matt. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Very good. Thank you for coming. Right. Thank, yes, you. thank you. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay. So the administrative things we have next are the approval of the September 24th, 24 meeting minutes, which I'll make a motion that we approve. And I'll second. Okay, Mr. Pavlov? Yes. Uh, motion Mullen? Yes. Mr. Schluter? Yes. And Ms. Sora? Yes. And Mr. Smith? Yes. Next administrative thing is the Bicentennial Hall update, which I will sort of put that into the liaison report for Katie, Historic Association. We also have Michael here. So I can she... fill in anything. What's yeah. that? I can fill in anything. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, let us know. What's going on. I'll start out with what we, the association, met. And one thing that we were concerned about was that um it, it appears that the work at by hall has uh, stalled for lack of a better word due to the folks that were going to work on it are like a death and i think there's a death and all that so there were two parts to it one was the ada work and then the second part was the punch list of various things to fix with the painting and um my understanding is i don't know any progress on either of those and the way we, I'm glad, and the way we knew that is that we were able to have a meeting there and we thought that the chapel would be shut down um, starting now. And our goal was to have it reopened in the spring. So it sounds like you've had an update. So um, kind of good, better news. Uh, why, don't you, so, why don't you come on up and then you just introduce yourself too, just okay. for people Michael that are. Michael Councilman Michael Dimaselli, 522 River Road. Uh, so the ADA work is starting December 1st which is good news. So they'll start that December, start week in December. They think it'll be done by February. So that's good news. You're right that the um, punch list work has stalled and now it has to go out to bid again. So that is kind of what's happening there. Um, one sort of good news is on that front is that the um, Chris York, Chris York, the administrator has gone after a $10,000 grant that could help with the exterior items on the punch list. So like, we finishing the side, fixing the siding and painting the siding. So there is potential for that work to hopefully happen. Is that in addition year. to the $38,000 yes. grant? That yes. Paid. So yeah. the historic trust grant, we did get awarded that. It hasn't been um, distributed yet, but we did get the 38000 That was the one that the Historic Association um, paid for the report to be done. And um, they were supposed to possibly match it. But from the sounds of it, it doesn't sound like we need to match anything right now. So mm -hmm. that's good news. So that's 38,000. But that money is towards what we're going to to figure out what we're going to do with the prod, with Bicentennial Hall, the use of it. And then that money can go like once we decide the use, like say we want a new AV system or something, you know, like something, or if we want new audio, that would that money could be applied to that. So that is good. The good thing also about that is that having a report like that, figuring out what we're going to do. So what it would be is like a lot of public meetings, um, you know, listening to what people want to do with the, with the property, um, kind of surveys or something like that, 
that report can help us go after other funding as well. So that will be helpful to get more funding. Um, I think what else? The again, the punch is on hold. And the other thing is that Robin um, O'Neill is going to put a Christmas tree out front again. So there will be a Christmas tree out front. And I think that's kind of it. So ADA is happening, hopefully done by February. The punch list is on hold. We'll have to go out to bid. Um, but there might be some work that can be done if we do get this $10,000 grant. It's a regrant. grant It was through um, oh, the Monmouth County Historical Association. Excellent. And um, before we began, any questions for us? Questions. Um, before we began, we were talking about this capstan thing too. Which yes. Really has come to light uh, due to some efforts of the association, and uh, I guess somebody um, recognized it or saw it and was wondering what to do with it. Yeah. So, off the record, we were having a discussion about it that it probably belonged to some, maybe the dock, maybe the Fairhaven dock at the end of Fairhaven Road. Um, it obviously is something associated with a dock, um, whether it was mechanical or not. I guess we're gonna have to take a look and see. And it was clearly um, embedded in significant concrete, you know, aimed at uh, anchoring it in place for probably heavy work and that sort of thing. And that's, you know, it was probably 18 to 22 inches of concrete there that they took it out. So what is the idea and what are the thoughts from the association or anyone else from Borough Council as to this element and what they would want to do with it or what their thoughts are. To be are. honest, it hasn't come up as a as a whole. I think you guys kind of got it first, then mm -hmm. the general uh, government and, body. And if I may, it, we also discussed at the association that we, we kind of have a ragtag process for this. Someone finds something cool yeah. in yeah. town, in their basement. And what do we I would put the, um, the windows at the police station, the original black school, um, in that category. Like, People say, oh, we need to preserve it. We need to do this, we need to do that. We don't have a mechanism, like mm -hmm. a process for person X found this, let's verify its historical authenticity. And I would think that um, the super Rich Gardella or whoever's in charge of you know, the part of the, the new construction or anything, they should be in the loop of here's something that we want to be part of your plans. Yeah. Because I'm already concerned that with a Police station. They're taking out that window, for example. Where is the window now? It's in the police station right now. Mm -hmm. um, but Daryl Breckenridge came in for in front of the council eight months ago, very yeah. passionate and said, Actually, "I think it was before it was before I started." Yeah, it was yeah. a year ago, and he said, uh, um, "We need to make sure that the significance of that building isn't left to chance." He said, I don't want to see a quick like piece of cement marker there. Is it being preserved? Is the window wrapped up? Is it? Uh... Is, we don't know the plans for that, although at least Casey said that they talked to a demo guy who knows how to take care of it. But Who's we know, they? Like the borough or? I don't know. That's the key. So when you say it's in the police station, where is it in the police If you walk in the front door, right over the front door, there's a about six feet. Oh, so it's so it's a part of the police yes, station. It was, it's not being stored. And it's not correct. Removed. Okay, so okay. so it hasn't been removed. Or not yet. There. Oh, part of the old police station. Yes, that big round window. Yes. What's the significance of it? It's a beautiful window, and it was part of the original historic school. Um, and I talked to the superintendent of school, Sean McNeil. Just we had a loose conversation, and I said, "Would it be cool if the window under which..." You know, black kids walked under every day to go to school. Now is that an old, you know, like, and then we were talking about that with rules, you can't have that kind of glass mm -hmm. on the outside of a school building right. anymore. Mm -hmm. And so then we just, we were just brainstorming. I just want to make sure that we don't hear, oh, demo is next week. Yeah. And then everybody's scrambling to say, make sure you protect that window. I just want to make sure there's a plan. I'll, I'll follow up on that yeah. and see what the plan I think is. People have been sensitive to that though. So I know it came wonder. up and I know what they said. <laughs> It was said that it was going to be saved, but I haven't heard an update in a while. So I'll find out. And aren't they, wasn't there also plans to keep the um the light lights? Yeah, yes. Because I, I know I had brought that up. Yes. Those are really pretty. And I think that's <laughs> the thing. So I'll, I'll follow up with you guys. But related to that, I did talk to a retired guy from DPW who smiled and said, Yeah, everybody thinks that was for the Albertina, but I'm not so sure. Somebody said on Facebook that it was on their parents' property. I just found that post. Yeah, yeah. I think you guys both commented uh, on Baton Road. Peter Little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Peter the capstan belonged to my Hill. family. It was kept by our little are, boat house at the end well, of that. Well, Bill, he's the descendant of the original captain. Right. Yeah, remember hauling family boats out with it when I was a kid. I have photos of my great uncle, Captain Ed, Captain oh. Ed Little, working with it. Yeah. I don't know its origin, but it was always there until I left the area. Hmm. So, I was at the little piece of property at the end of Baton Road. Yeah. It was there when I left town in 76. So it seems to me that um, perfect place for it would be in the in park next to the yeah, dock. That's what I think. Yeah. But the only thing is, is it date, you know, is it kids are going to climb on it? Is it dangerous? That's the only thing. So I did go on YouTube. I found a guy that restores that. It was, <laughs> and he has a process for how restores it and sands it and makes make sure it's not rough and all that. Is he an expert? And yes. You know, so I went, where is he at? Yeah. It's not it's not a cheap would you send the yeah, just well, it's gotta be grass, I would think. Yeah. What was the purpose of that? Like grass? <laughs> for it's it like a big fish. Yeah, yeah, they would they so would if, they would, would these have rods lines in? around it. Would these have rods in the yeah, it's got it. it. I think so. Like when you see one on a on a natural right. yeah. tank, so yeah. like you think it's in the front of like a ship that pulls yeah. out the anchor, yeah. the anchor yeah. line so goes it's on. It's like a big yeah. winch. Yeah, that's cool. And you think that they maybe put something in there, and that was how they like, turned it? it sounds I'm gonna like, have to take a closer look at it. Sounds like this person would be a great first source. At least take to close to. photos, and maybe you can give us some idea. Yeah. You know, probably look at it immediately. Oh yeah, that's from yeah. What so yeah, photo, yeah, 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 so yeah. Peter what um. Have you looked at it close up close? I have not. So I, but I mean that would be cool to get information too and like have a plaque made if we're gonna do something. And I don't know. And by the a little way, little bit I mean if it's <laughs> in somebody's house, I mean, you know, a little bit different than if it was, you know, at the you know, fair yeah. dock, but yeah. And Viola Sickle, by the way, was a little. That's what the L is. Oh, okay. So when she lived in their house, that was probably the little one that would be. Anything else? So, do you know anything else about this? Anybody said anything? I can follow up. With and that and who was that? Like, how did that come about on that Facebook post? I didn't. I I actually just googled Capstan Fairhaven, and the first thing that popped up was these this Facebook post. Um, it looks like somebody because this this is the the street over from me. Someone named uh, Chris Brenner. Um, yeah. He posted and said, you know, hey, what, what's you know, is there a plan for this and. And this guy Peter Little, it was on like the Fairhaven Facebook page or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and the guy, this guy Peter Little, said that that, that belongs to my family. And he comments quite often when anything historical comes up. Mm -hmm. He mentions the, the legacy of his family. I think we should start with him. Yeah, it sounds like he's he's certainly willing to chat. And if there's real money involved in restoring it, that's outside of the budget for the park. It sounds that might be an opportunity for something like fundraising or. You have an email? Uh, for him? I have a, it's just like the Facebook profile. Uh, I can, you could just DM, but yeah, you know, if you time. could, maybe I'm, you not, I'm not on Facebook. I can do it. Yeah, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can, message, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll message him. Yeah. Okay. You probably have other nuggets. Caps. Caps. Spell it C A P S T A N. I'm not getting great service, but I'll I'll yeah. put a calendar in mind. Okay. Anything else uh, from historic Bicentennial Hall or yeah. no? Um, any environmental commission news? I got nothing. I haven't heard from anyone in <laughs> kind of five months. Yeah. Okay. The last thing we've got. Oh, you, 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 I'm sorry. If you want the tree ordinance did go through, and if you knew that, so that that would be kind of an environmental commission piece. That um, so the tree ordinance went through. Basically, if anyone um, tears and takes down a tree, they need to. Any application has to go through. There's no denial, but you would have to either replace it with one or two trees, depending on the size of it, and or pay into a fund. Is it uh, does it depend on the size or the species of the tree? <laughs> How much are you paying for the fund? What's the it's that pay stuff? Five hundred for one tree, and then but there's no limit on the number of trees you can cut down either. Mm -hmm. So it used to be if if it was over what ten inches, then you got to get approval. You don't have to get approval anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so no approval. Okay. okay. Just application, but right. Oh, but it all. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Unless it's um, if it's deemed a hazard tree, mm -hmm. you still have to do an application. Like if it has fallen, you still have to do an application after the fact. Okay. But, Okay. I had a question that's not on the agenda. 
Turn it back to now. That's fine. So how would you answer this question? Someone who lives in the historic district, who I was talking to, said, I want to sell my house, but I think it'll be worth more if I'll be able to sell it, if the buyer knows that he or she can redo it, do a tear down, you know, and rebuild it. And and I said, I don't know how that works. I said, because of, we don't, you know what I mean? Like, how does that work? So, I mean, is it the buyer either, beware? We either have jurisdiction or we don't. Well, we do. It's right in this. Well, I'm saying so. So the seller and the realtor, uh, the question is asked. They obviously have to indicate that it is, and that okay. frequently we get contacted by people that are like contract purchasers, yeah. realtors. Yeah. You know, what can I do? What can I do? And I say you got to come before us, and we'll let you know informally. Informally, yeah. okay. So that's the problem. So if someone was interested. The the seller could say you need to yeah and I frequently uh, entertain it. questions and they ask a lot of different things yeah. and I have to of course say that I'm not making yeah. a representation from the yeah. commission but you know if they say they want to change like a screen door or something it's not a big deal but if they want to knock the house yeah. down you know yeah we have to alert them depending on the house that you know it may not be so easy to do that right um, if you're allowed to at all so okay so it's not you know um in terms okay. of the value we're weighing in on that it's not something that we would really yeah. do and i asked this person i said do you do you have do you care he's, he's one of these people like i have no emotional attachment anymore so it doesn't it doesn't matter to me if someone tears down the house that he grew up in or not like he's just wants to well again it's good yeah because how about uh, Greg and uh, Greg Lewis's house on Gillespie? It was two bedroom, <coughs> um, and it was uh, went on the market for one oh nine five and sold for one point four million. That little gray one is it gray? It's a little like white a, one. It's got like on a little like eyebrow window on it. With um, with a redo, perhaps down the road. One four five. No, it's in perfect condition. Huh. It's in perfect condition. Is it uh, on your side of the street, about uh, halfway between uh, River Road and Clay? It is. So on right. it's, it's on the right-hand side, kind of across from Jacqueline's house on Gillespie. Oh, on Gillespie. Oh, I'm thinking. No, no, the house no, yeah. on Gillespie. Yeah. yeah. The house on oh, Normandy yeah. sold, mm -hmm. and I hear people say, oh, well, that's a teardown. That's a teardown. And I'm thinking to myself, mm -hmm. Oh, so you're in the same house. What did that house sell for? What like they something over? like eight. It was on yeah. for seven seventy five, mm -hmm. but it's in a very bad condition. I was thinking that one for one four away. Yeah, now we're in business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that that one. I mean, I don't know what. I mean, apparently, the foundation is uh, wood. You know, stumps. Like tree trunks. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I'll probably get an application at some point. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. It's going right Okay. Anything else on that? Yeah. Or uh, did we look at anybody your 2025 um, meeting dates? Um, I can move, uh, I think, two of them because of. Council meeting conference. And that's uh oh, and then the other one I just wanted to call out in April. It's just the um that April 22nd is the Tuesday after Easter, but the Fairhaven school break is the week before, so it's not a conflict with Fairhaven. yeah. I, I would think maybe December 18th as opposed to the 23rd. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. the Thursday the 18th. Yeah. That's what we were hoping. That I mean, Thursday. Oh, so you're saying you're saying Thursday the 18th. I'm saying could we do Thursday the 18th? But yeah. our, you know, if you went by the calendar to figure out what our usual dates are, it would have been. Yeah. When is our December meeting? Uh, December. 17th? <laughs> On Tuesday. Yeah, so I would. Uh, I make a motion to approve the dates as uh, depicted, with uh, the May meeting being on Thursday, May 29th. Assuming that's not the day before Memorial Day. No. I think it may be. 
Friday. I think that would put the Monday at the so uh, so. day is May 26th. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So that Monday. Yeah. So yeah, May 29th. And then uh, the December meeting would be December 18th as opposed to the 23rd. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Unless anybody has an issue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know if we have to take to a vote if you want to. I don't know if you have to. We will have them on the agenda in January for like approval, but this is really to get everybody on board so that we can get them down. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Motion to close. Unless there's anything out, unless there's anything from uh, the Zoom world. No, we might have to try it. Um, okay. Very good, everybody. All right. Yeah, it's funny when we're off, aren't we? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah. 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 Yeah.